टुडे वी विल लर्न कंप्रेसिव टेस्ट ऑन क्यूब एम इज टू स्टडी द बिहेवियर ऑफ द गिवेन मटेरियल अंडर कंप्रेसिव लोड एंड टू फॉलोइंग मॉडल्स ऑफ इलास्टिसिटी मैक्सिमम कंप्रेसिव स्ट्रेंथ और अल्टीमेट स्ट्रेस परसेंटेज डिक्रीज इन लेंथ परसेंटेज इंक्रीज इन एरिया एपरेटस रिक्वायर्ड यूनिवर्सल टेस्टिंग मशीन डाल गोज वन ईयर कैलिपर एंड स्कल मटेरियल वी हैव टेकन हेयर फॉर टेस्ट इज वुड थ्यूरी डक्टाइल मटेरियल्स अटेन अ पल्स और अ बैरल सेप आफ्टर रीचिंग द मैक्सिमम कंप्रेशन लोड नो फ्रैक्चर टेक्स प्लेस एंड दे इज चेंज इन क्रॉस सेक्शन एंड कंप्रेशन वैल्यू रिमेंस द सेम ऑन रीचिंग द मैक्सिमम लोड एज सोन इन द फिगर वन For brittle materials, there will be no change in the cross section or height of the specimen due to the compression load. On reaching the maximum compression load, the specimen suddenly fractures, as shown in the figure two. The compression test is just opposite to tension test with regard to direction. However, there are certain practical difficulties which may introduce error in this test. There are difficulty in applying truly axial load. There is always a tendency of the specimen to bend in addition to contraction. To avoid these errors, usually the specimen for this test shall be short in length, not more than two times the diameter. In a compression test, stress-strain curve is drawn up to the elastic limit of proportionality. Metals have approximately the same modulus of elasticity as in tension test. The curve for ductile materials continues almost without limit as there is no fracture of the material due to its ductility and cross-sectional area increases continuously with increase in load. The specimen will shorten and bulge out. Compression test is mainly used for testing brittle materials such as cast iron, concrete, etc. Brittle materials commonly fail along a diagonal plane due to shearing. Procedure First, the original dimensions of the specimen like original dia, gauze length, etc. Second, the specimen is mounted on the universal testing machine between the fixed and movable jaws. Third, the load range in the machine is adjusted to its maximum capacity 300 kN. Fourth, the dial gauze is mounted on the machine at the appropriate positions and adjusted to zero. Fifth, the machine is switched on and the compressive load is applied gradually. Sixth, for every 10 kN of load, the readings of dial gauze is noted and tabulated. Seventh, remove the dial gauze at slightly below the expected load at yield point. Eight, record the load at yield point. At yield point, the pointer on load scale will remain stationary for a small interval of time and blue needle will come back by one or two division that point is lower yield point. Ninth, the specimen is loaded continuously up to the ultimate load. Red needle will stop, which is to be noted. Tenth, the specimen is removed and final dimensions are measured. Calculations Stress is equal to sigma is equal to load by area is equal to P by A in Newton per mm square. Strain is equal to change in length by original length. Young's modulus E is equal to stress by strain in Newton per mm square. Percentage decrease in length is equal to Li minus Lf divided by Lf into 100. Percentage increase in area is equal to Af minus Ai divided by Ai into 100. Ultimate compressive strength is equal to sigma is equal to ultimate load by initial area in Newton per mm square. Results first modulus of elasticity E is equal to in Newton per mm. Second maximum compressive strength or ultimate stress is equal to sigma uc is equal to in Newton per mm square. Third percentage decrease in length. Fourth percentage increase in area. Viva questions first. Compression tests are generally performed on brittle material. Why? Second, which will have a higher strength? A small specimen or a full size member made of the same material. Third, what is column action? How does the H by D ratio of a specimen affect the test result? 
Fourth, how do ductile and brittle materials in their behavior in compression test? Fifth, what are bimodulus materials? Give examples. Applications. Applications of compression testing in the aerospace and automotive industry include actuation test on pedals, switches, and solenoids. Spring testing.